Buongiorno a tutti. My name is Amaya Bañuelos Marco and I'm part of the Lago Film Fest. Today I have the great pleasure of speaking to Manuel Muñoz Molina, who is the director of Aqueronte. Aqueronte is a screening as part of our international competition program. And the film had its world premiere at Rotterdam Film Festival this year, where it received the KNF Award. It has also been part of very important film festivals, such as True Falls Festival in the US, Berwick Film Media Arts and Festival in the UK, and Indy Lisboa. So we are super happy to have this film as part of Lago Film Fest. And the film will screen on Friday, the 21st of July at 9.30. So that's the first day of the festival. Um, for those who don't know this film, this is a very beautiful film, very immersive film that takes place on a ferry boat that crosses passengers from one shore of the river to another. Through close-ups, we see a group of people, the passengers, who are all unfamiliar to each other as they make this journey and we get snippets of their conversation. In this film, time is suspended and what should take only three minutes is a journey from dawn to dusk. So, Manuel, <clears throat> thank you so much for joining us today. We know you have a busy, busy day ahead. So, um, I wanted to ask you about Acheronte. Firstly, is this is your first short film after your feature-length documentary film El Mar Nos Mira de Lejos, or The Sea Stares at Us from Afar, which premiered at Berlinale or Berlin International Film Festival in 2017. So how did Acheronte start and why did you decide to return to the short film format? Oh, am I muted? You're good now. <laughs> I'm good? All right, okay. Um, so if I ask with you, well, thank you, Amaya, for the presentation and the intro and introduction, and and it's my pleasure to to join you in this in this meeting. Um, if if I start with with your second question, why return to the to the short film fest uh, to the short uh, format? I, I I really uh, how uh, how to say I really don't make that much of a difference. Like ideas come and they come uh, I mean like it's, it's, I, I don't even feel like it was a choice or a conscious uh, choice that okay so now I want to make a short film it's just the idea came and somehow it felt that that was the 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 format that the idea demanded mm -hmm. um, and I I suppose it might happen more often in, in in my career that I'm going to be doing feature films and, and short films. Uh, uh, yeah, it doesn't respond to any specific uh, desire to make it this way, or it doesn't, of course, it doesn't respond to any strategic uh, decision. It's just an idea that was uh, pulling me with, with more uh, strength or with more desire than other ideas that I had in mind in that moment so I, I wanted to work on it and also I don't think of short films as a, a small brother of feature films or as a less uh, uh, important or I don't know I, if, we, as, as if we think for example of uh, Maybe maybe we could think of feature films as novels and short films as poems, or and also within the realm of poetry, we 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 would never dare to say that a haiku is less than a sonnet or sonnet. I don't know if you say sonnet in English, but mm -hmm. uh, um, it's just a different way of of dealing with uh, sensations and and a different way of articulating ideas within the 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 coordinates of a, of a shorter format but uh, I, I was happy to to work back with uh, with this format and the idea comes from well it's funny I made a short film many years ago for which I shot one sequence in that ferry boat um, this is something like two, 2008 or 2009 the short film was called with the wind and it was a narrative short and one sequence i shot it in this ferry 
And while I was shooting it, I was really seduced by by the place itself, by the movement, the contrast between the stillness of the passengers and the and the moving landscape around the passengers, uh, the suspension of time, uh, the fact that a lot of unrelated people are sharing uh, this journey and somehow they are like neighbors, they are very close to each other and simultaneously very distant from each other, each one somehow isolated in their own bubble of intimacy, maybe inside their car or maybe smoking a cigarette, uh, looking at the scenery. But, but, but I, I, I thought it was very tasty, this contrast between stillness and movement and between intimacy and, and the common experience of sharing the voyage, of sharing the, the, the trip, the travel. Um, and then there is also a lot of uh, aesthetic qualities in, in terms of the shifting of the lights and shadows as the ferry progresses, of, uh, of the, of the ferry, as the ferry moves. There is this shifting lights and shadows. And I don't know, I, th I thought in this place I could find a lot of things that I identify as... Uh, essentially cinematographic no like movement time portraits landscape uh, yeah faces yeah i don't know i thought i thought all the ingredients were there uh, for me to shape a cinematographic uh, experience mm -hmm. yeah yeah and, and definitely the film is for whoever has seen it and, and those who will see it, they will obviously notice that it's very beautifully and elegantly shot, it's very aesthetic, it's very cinematic. And um, one thing that really struck me is that is um, in terms of the cinematography, and I also realized today that you are uh, part of the cinematography team as well. Um, so you will definitely be able to tell us more about that, but it's almost entirely shot through close-ups and then <clears throat> that together with a very interesting sound uh, editing mm -hmm. make us perceive these characters as if we are sort of spying on them or like observing them through binoculars and, and eavesdropping their conversations. So I, I thought that was really interesting of the film and I wanted to ask you what was your decision behind or what was your thinking behind these choices of like like looking really closely to the characters mm -hmm. as if we are looking at them from afar but actually the sound is very present as if we were really mm -hmm. close to them mm -hmm. yeah the um, when 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 i travel when i when i have used that transport as a passenger myself um i'm always like very aware of the people around me uh, maybe driven by curiosity uh I try to figure out who these people are, these strangers that randomly are sharing the trip with me. And I, when I take the boat, which I do quite often, uh, sometimes, well, very often I did it with the purpose of thinking how I wanted to make this film. No, So I, I became almost like friends with the people who, who are in charge of the ferry so I could stay uh, for a couple of hours in the ferry going from one side to the other side and and enjoying this possibility of being a little bit of a voyeur um, who can observe the other passengers and I like the fact that during the journey it's not long enough to get a, an idea of who these people are you just get like a little hint mm -hmm. like a little drawing uh, of eventually a character and you wonder where does this person come from where is he going or where is she going uh, what's happening between those two people over there i see them a little bit tense so i don't know i i enjoy wondering and asking myself who are these people what's going on there and they are strangers to me and they will remain strangers to me once i arrive to the other shore but i can't help to imagine a little bit about their lives, who they are, etc. No, so I, in a way, I wanted to 
to provide an immersive experience so the viewer of the film somehow feels like another passenger in the boat. And sometimes you have uh, a distant relationship with other passengers because they might be a few meters away, but some of the times you can hear the voice of people who are sitting in the car next to yours this because this ferry is carrying not only pedestrians but also cars and all sorts of vehicles and very often you get like bits of conversations coming from the car which is side by side to yours and maybe the the windows are open and you get a little bit of a conversation or you get the music coming from the radio in another car and maybe you step out of your car and you get a different perspective and you see someone who at first you thought it was alone. Maybe you see from your car a woman who seems to be alone. And when you step out of the car and you have a wider perspective, you realize that it's not alone, it's with someone else. Um, you discover, oh, there's a couple over there. I thought, I thought that girl was uh, by herself or that woman by, uh, was by herself or that man was mm -hmm. by, by himself. And then there's, there's a very playful experience in moving yourself in the space and noticing connections between people that seem to be not connected at first sight and with this uh, choice of uh, editing the sound in a way that not always the dialogues we hear correspond to the people we see i think that helps to have this immersive experience where you feel surrounded Mm -hmm. and the attention doesn't focus on one single element but you have to also uh, imagine what is out of the frame uh, by the by the suggestions of the of the sound and then the choice of close-ups of shooting with uh, mostly uh, frames that don't reveal too much of the scenery that's that's mostly because uh, the actual journey of the ferry, the real journey of the ferry, it only lasts like three, four minutes. And in, in the film, I wanted it to be like a more transcendental journey, not, not just a single three minute journey. I wanted, I wanted it to be more metaphysical and to, to resonate in another way. So I was tricking somehow, no, I, I'm, I'm using film and I'm using framing and editing in a way that I turned a three-minute journey into a journey that takes from dust till down, no, or from down till dust, sorry. And mm -hmm. uh, so I had to hide a little bit of the... I couldn't show the landscape in a very explicit way because if I did, everyone would notice that the boat is not actually moving, that we are we are... A faking a space so that's interesting a friend of mine also a filmmaker when he saw a rough cut he say oh i i love i love how you build the, the time but i think uh, there's something missing about the space and, I, and and my response was yeah of course there's something missing because if i show the surroundings if i show the space in a very uh, transparent way um I'm not going to. I'm going to fail in this in this attempt of turning a three-minute journey into a whole day journey. You know, so that's why I had to keep many angles somehow uh, unseen or blind somehow. I, I needed to work with blind spots, so mm. so the viewer is not aware. Where are we? At, at the beginning, we don't even know if we are in a river or we are in a lake or we are in a. Maybe we are going in the into the sea. You, you don't know that you are going to the opposite shore, no? So, yeah, I wanted to. I mean, I was forced somehow to be consequent with this idea of a journey that seems to take forever. I was forced to work with these blind spots related to to the knowledge or the understanding of the space of the surrounding space. Absolutely. I think it really you really managed that really well because there's all of that um yeah suspense like we, we really want to see this the other shore and, and mm -hmm. you know there's all these kids in the film when are we arriving when are we arriving and 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 you think that you are eventually gonna see the other side but you don't and actually 
this kind of connects with my other question that I wanted to ask you about the film's title. And I was really curious about this title. And mm -hmm. uh, obviously I did a bit of research, but I wanted to ask you if you could share with, with the people that are watching us today. Um, can you tell us a bit more about the meaning of, of the title and of this, sorry, of this word and the relation mm -hmm. to your film? Mm. Aqueronte, well, probably pe many people are familiarized with Caron, who was this boatman in the Greek mythology who would bring the souls of the dead towards the realm of the ghosts or, um, or souls of the dead people, etc. And Aqueronte is, well, is the way in Spanish to name the river that Caron, the boatman, uh, navigates. Uh, at first, the short film, as the working title was Caron, Caronte, was the, the boatman uh, mm -hmm. who brings the souls. But then, I, as I was editing the film, uh, I realized that the boatman was irrelevant. Uh, it's not a character in the film. We barely see his, we only, we only see his hands driving the wheel of the of the ferry and there is one shot in which we see uh, a little bit of his body behind a window but the reflections of the sun don't allow us to see his actual face mm -hmm. so he, he he's he remains as a mystery this boatman and i think the river is much more evocative uh, this idea of the river through which the souls uh, of the people are navigating from one life to the next life. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought it was more evocative and I thought it was a way to somehow to uh, open the space for the viewer to watch the film through these glasses home, somehow. I mean, to in, in a way to suggest from even from the title the allegorical um, nature of the film because we're crossing a river but uh, yeah we're crossing a river from one shore to the other shore which which could be perceived as a very uh, prosaic mundane thing but i wanted it to i wanted it to suggest something about our journey in life we depart from one shore birth before before that shore there's nothing we can relate to everything is somehow opaque and we arrive to another shore whenever we die um, and after that shore we we can't see anything here there is another obscure opaque mm -hmm. term uh, yeah you know I, I thought of the film that it could work as an allegory or a metaphor for for the journey of life uh, as, as, a, as a transitional state from something which is unknown to us towards something which is also unknown to us. And in between these two terms, all we know is that we are here now, but we know this is ephemeral. We know this is a, a transitory, transitional state. Um, yeah, I suppose I was thinking of life as an in-between, life as something that happens in between two nothingness. And yeah, maybe I don't, I, I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't like uh, explain too much about this metaphorical uh, <laughs> nature of the film. But this this is what I was Mm -hmm. thinking of i suppose when i when i chose this title of acheronte which i think comes in in greek uh etymologically i think it comes from river of pain and then in the greek mythology is is used uh as as this river that caron uses to bring the souls from from one world to the other realm mm -hmm. It's interesting because also in the film, like I watched it a few times and there's these conversations about death and, and, mm -hmm. and illness and, mm -hmm. and there's also, I think, a pregnant woman. So there's all of these yeah. little elements that then 
once you sort of think about the film in this way, it all comes together. But even mm. if you don't know that, I think mm. is as you said, very experiential, very immersive, and it really makes you feel that you're going through that journey yourself mm -hmm. as well, and you don't know where you're arriving and, and where mm -hmm. you're going to. So, yeah, it's mm. um, fascinating, really, uh, at so many levels. Um, mm. So, yeah, I kind of wanted to ask you now, uh, we talk mm -hmm. a lot about this film, but since we know that you are currently working on a new project, if you could mm -hmm. let us know a bit more about um, this project, if it's a fiction documentary, short, feature length, yeah, anything that you can share at this point. Yeah. Do you allow me to say something about what about the previous uh, question? Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. <laughs> if we're right on time, yeah, I, I mean, when, when I was talking about this allegorical or metaphorical uh, nature of the film, I don't, I, I don't, uh, so it's not like I expect every viewer to, to read it that way, it's not necessary, and I think the film can work, as you say, at different layers, and the first thing, I think, is to actually have, or to have a physical experience of being in the boat and having this feeling of suspended time while we are traveling, etc. If some viewers, uh, it, it might resonate with some viewers, this idea of the journey of life. And the first thing we hear besides the mechanical sounds of the, of the boat is, is the cry of a baby that somehow could relate to coming to life, no? Uh, or, and then we, the last shot we see of a person in the film is, is a shot of, is a shot of the, the face of, a, of an old man who is actually my father and who had just survived a, a very tough illness when we shot the film. So, I mean, there, there are some clues that are like really private that, are, that work for me, and, but I, I don't think they are like, it's not necessary for the viewer to read all these little hints uh, in order to enjoy the film. Like, it, like the film can work as a physical, immersive experience, very sensory. Uh, that a film that somehow touches the viewer uh, through the skin and through the heart and through the senses before it actually becomes a I don't know a rational or a or a think uh, or uh, uh, something for an interpretative exercise. It's, it's, it was not my yeah. intention. But yeah, as you say, there are different layers and it might resonate with some viewers. Uh, sorry for that little... No, 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 it's uh, great. I think, yeah, you are just mentioning like how poetic the film is and that, mm -hmm. that that's the first thing mm -hmm. that gets into you, all, all of the elements that make it that make you feel as an spectator that you're watching something very poetic and then mm. there's all of the other layers of interpretation mm -hmm. that you you also gain with more viewings or yeah mm -hmm. learning more yeah. about the film so yeah it's, I, I guess it's like that with every film no that uh, this is like a like a path and some people enjoy one aspect of the film some mothers go a little bit beyond in the path and and then, and then some other viewers might have interpretations that are richer than my own intentions, and uh, that happens mm -hmm. too. Yeah, and then answering to to your other question, I'm I'm shooting a film. I I don't know whether to call it a documentary or a fiction. Definitely, the starting point is very attached to reality because uh, the main characters are my parents. Um, um my father my father had well i i just mentioned it but he had like a a, a very tough a very serious uh, condition in a neurological problem uh, he had to go through some uh, neuro sur surgery and he stayed in 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 bed in hospital like for six months it was a really long time that he was like in between life and death again and he survived and somehow my reaction to that was i wanted to make a that i wanted to make a film with with my parents somehow as an offering we could say as a pagan, uh, pagano i don't know the, how to say in english um 
like an uh, payment. pagano, pagano, uh, como no, like not religious, but uh, yeah. uh, pagan, I think, or pa pagan. pagan. Yeah. Okay, like uh, some kind, some kind of offering in gratitude for the fact that he survived a, a very threatening situation of life death situation and that was the starting point uh, for me to come with this idea of uh, an old couple that makes a journey uh, after a serious illness and after recovering from a serious illness and this couple decides to make a journey looking for the spring of a river so they make the journey uh, following the track of the river, but not towards the sea, but in the opposite direction towards the spring or the fountain from where the from where the river uh, starts. No, um, so there's like this: it's two people that are somehow in the decline of their lives, uh, but they are walking and traveling towards the great mystery of the origin of life and and yeah I, I i've written the film and i have shaped it in a way that can relate more to fiction so the container the the narrative it's somehow a fiction that i have orchestrated myself but within this container this fictional container there's a documentary content because my parents are playing who they are they are not playing somebody someone mm -hmm. else they're playing who they are for for my narrative so the, i suppose it's a hybrid uh encounter or mm -hmm. mix uh, between fiction and documentary um yeah <laughs> and, it's and, like and a good, really good pairing no with akeronte sounds at least at mm -hmm. these stages so yeah so somehow they, they 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 relate to each other yeah they relate to each other they are somehow connected mm. nice so thank you so much uh, for your time and for sharing more information and and yeah all of the process about the film has been really interesting to speak to you and just a reminder that the film is a screening on the first day of the festival so that's friday the 21st of july at 9 30. Tickets for the whole festival are only 16 euros, so please come and watch this film and other amazing films that we have as part of this year's program. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Amaya. Um, it was a pleasure. And I'm still hesitating, <laughs> but I, I might eventually appear in Lago oh, for yes, the <laughs> for the screening. If if I manage to finish the, the shooting on time, I, I might... Uh, do a little journey in the north of Italy and... Oh yeah, you should come. Uh, it would be a pleasure. So There's I'm a big lake, do... so I think you're gonna like the water scenery. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> yeah, it must be a really nice spot to watch a film that happens on water, yeah. Exactly, yeah. I'll do my more best. immersive, even more immersive. The even film is more, more immersive. immersive, but not even more, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay. okay, so thank you very much and hope to see you soon. Yes, likewise. Bye. Bye-bye.